Hey everyone, welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. I'm Captain Force Falcon, and we just finished up taking care of things in the swamp area. Well, Luigi's Purple Volcano, no! No! It looks so ugly! Why? Why did we go and save this place? It, it completely ruined it. It was so beautiful as a purple volcano. Now Waluigi doesn't have a special lair. We are the worst people ever. I'm so depressed now. Okay, but yeah, sadly we ruined Waluigi's lovely purple volcano. That was actually two episodes ago, I believe. Not last episode. But so what we're going to be doing is, I believe I said that we were going to be heading back to Clock Town, but that's not going to be the case quite yet, because instead we are going to be Doing yet another mini game. Wow, so finishing off the last episode with mini games, starting this episode off with mini games. What else is new? Actually, we never do that. We haven't been doing many mini games at all. Anyway, um, if you guys will give me a second, I just have to adjust something quickly with the game. There we go. Okay, so I just adjusted the controller a bit. I me how are you? Wanna play? What game's 20 rupees? Uh, yes, we shall play. The rules to my game are a piece of cake. Shoot for the targets from atop the platform, you gotta hit them all, that's all there is to it. If you don't aim proper with the control stick, you won't hit any of them. Are you ready, mate? Yes, we are ready. So, I adjusted my controller so I can aim slower and actually hit these guys. Because the way it works is it has the... I had it set at going at maximum all the time so I can go the proper max speed. But that's no get that's no good for something like precision aiming. Like you see, oh gosh, oh gosh. I can't keep up with the wolf. I can't keep up with the wolf. Ah. Yeah, I can only have the controller moving at a specific speed. So that kind of sucks. Okay, let's hit this guy right there. But I adjusted it so it'll be optimal for me. Okay, I'm going over here as fast as I can. Gosh, you. I am probably going to be a little low on time. But it should work out fine as long as I hit this guy. Yes. Okay, there should be another one there. Come on. Oh, I missed those two. Sheesh. Come on back up, you stupid Deku Scrubs. I'm not letting you get out of this. Okay, one, two... Oh no, Wolf, Wolf, come back here. And I got you. Please tell me he comes back. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. That was... Give me a second. I'm doing this proper this time. Okay, you stupid Deku Scrubs. You know, this is all that stupid Deku Scrub on the mountain. That... Fuck that flipping bastard. You're gonna die, bastard. Die, die, die. Thank you. Where are you, crows? There you are. Yeah, so it's the one frustrating thing about playing this on an emulator is the fact that... Well, not playing on an emulator so much, more than I'm using a keyboard that's the problem. So it limits my control stick capabilities. There we go. Now we're now we should be set because now I can just focus on wolves and whatnot. Wolf, come out to play. There we go. There we go. Got them all. That's what I want. Oh shoot! Am I looking the right way? No, I'm not. Okay, and the crows are probably the the most important ones that you get because they will disappear. Come back here, you son of a bitch! Ugh. He almost got away. That stupid bastard. I mean, did you see him? I was shooting a ridiculous number of arrows at him, and he was refusing to go down. Okay, now it was one of you bastards that got away on me last time. I'm pretty sure it was you. Yes, it was you. Okay, he's dead now. So now we just have... One wolf? Yes, that was it. So if we just hit that one crow, that one crow that wouldn't get hit by the bow, we would have been fine. But no, some crow had to be a big shot and go and fly off into nowhere and never come back. So, Foos J.U. crow, Foos J.U. Well, that's pretty darn good, mate. Perfect. 
Here you go, take this. Ugh. All these voices. And we get a large quiver for that. So, the, and you know the stupid thing is, I have to do this again. Well, since you've seen me do this twice, um, I'm going to fast forward through this so you don't have to watch me and doing my horrible bow shooting techniques. Okay, let's do this. Going up for you, you're gonna die. Coming back for the crows, they're all gonna die. This is a massacre. Yes, yes. Deku's. Deku's. No, 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 you stupid wolf. Die. I sh. Oh, you guys think you're big shots too, huh? There. Oh no, there's one more wolf. Boom! In the back, and you die in a horrible flash of blue flame. Okay, well, I'm sorry that I had to do that three times because of some stupid crow, but we have now done it yet again. And the reason why we have to do it a second time, so... First time we got the big quiver, right? So we do it again, and we get a piece of heart. So that's... Oh, I tell your friends about us, all right? So that's pretty sweet, eh? We get some nice piece of heart, we get a bow quiver, and it's taken a ridiculous amount of the episode just to do that. So, give me one second, guys. Okay, we're back now that I've adjusted the controller so we're no longer on bow control mode. We are now going to be heading back to Clocktown because that's the thing to do. Okay, let me play the song right for once. For some reason on camera, I've been having a terrible streak of playing songs horribly. Um, you know what? I've got the money. I'm going to go buy maps from Tingle. Because Tingle is the best guy ever. He's the best friend a friend can have. So, Tingle, I'm coming for you. I've come all this way just to shoot you out of the air in your stupid bubble. Even though these two areas are not areas that we are going to need a map to. Tingle, come back down here. Tingle. Tingle. Kulu Lim, die. Yes, break your legs. We will find Tingles that will break their legs more easily than you. Hmm, a white fairy. The way you look. Oh, magic, isn't it, sir? Hello, Mr. Fairy. Will you buy one of Tingle's maps? Okay, let me get this straight. He thinks that I look like a human by magic. This is how I normally look, you idiot in green. So, we're going to buy two maps here. Romani Ranch, which is the area we are at right now. It's probably one of my it's probably one of my favorite areas in this game. But we're not going to be going there quite yet cuz we can't cuz there's a giant boulder in the way. And Great Bay, that's the other one. That's the third area in the game. Well, third major area that has a temple, but we won't be going there yet. The area that we are going, we have yet to hear about. Actually, we probably could have gone in it from... Actually, no, I think we did get the map for it, yes? Yeah, so looking at this, you can see that now we've got the map for pretty much everywhere except this one area over to the east, and we won't be getting that for a while, let me tell you. <laughs> Okay, now seriously, off to Clock Town. Oh, okay, so now we're in Clock Town. And because I'm bored and feel like it, I'm going to go here into the dojo and talk to the Swords Master with my new masks that I collected recently. Let's see, what did I collect? Actually, I think I just collected this one. I want to see what he says when I'm a pig. This is a training center of the Sacred Sword. Why do you wear that mask? I am not sticky. I take a bath at least once a month. <laughs> I love that guy. He's got some of the best dialogue in the game. So I'm serious. Every time we come to Clock Town and we have new masks, I'm going to go and talk to him and see what he says. Every single time we come to Clock Town and have new masks. That is going to be a thing. So I don't believe we've been in the bomb shop yet. But we've met this lady, right? If we talk to her... Lady, lady, I'm going to talk to you. It's such a shame. I thought we could finally sell big bomb bags. 
Uh, mummy, don't go picking up bomb bags in the middle of the night anymore, eh? It's like asking to be mugged, you know? And doesn't the North Gate have a reputation for being a dangerous place? You know, because the guard kind of doesn't do his job. I never would have suspected that prancing character of anything. He just looked so, so suspicious that I couldn't possibly believe he would be responsible for doing things. From now on, I'll go. Or not. You know, I'm kind of busy doing my bicep curls with this bomb here. The old lady from the bomb shop was added to your notebook. Oh, well that's neat. Welcome. Well, he looks totally stoked right now. Actually, we should have had the larger bomb bags, but they got stolen, so we suck. Okay, we're gonna buy ourselves a bomb bag here, because we can. We got a bomb bag, we can now use bombs. And, just be- Oh, I don't have the money, I was gonna buy bomb juice, but I'm 10 rupees short. You know what? I don't care. I know it's a waste of money, but I am going to go to the bank and take out 10 rupees just so I can get those bomb shoes. Yes, excuse me, please look at me, I am a thing. And, yep. My gosh, we are so low on money now. I've just been spending money at a ridiculous rate. And I suppose it didn't really help that um, Vice made me sort of get lose money on his special back in episode 10. That sure didn't help my financial problems, but yes, these are bomb shoes. They are one of the coolest items in a Zelda game that you don't ever have to pick up. Like, they aren't really required ever, except in a very, very few small instances in the game. They're one... How about I just show off what these things do? Okay, so you pick them up. You put him down, it goes zipping off into the sunset up walls, and does all kind of crazy crud. <laughs> it is pretty, it's pretty cool. I like the bomb shoes. But they're, I like Deku nuts too, but like bomb, like, did I say bombs? Bombs. They're bombs. Bomb flowers, bombs, bomb shoes. I need to get my words right. <sighs> okay. Dog in the water. You'll help my thoughts concentrate. Yes, my thoughts are third person. They do their own thing. We don't really have any good connections. That's why I speak gibberish all the time. Okay, anyway, um... Oh, I should show off this one thing that you can do now that you've got in the super spin attack. Is you can actually do a spin attack and destroy all the grass at once. And you get 20 rupees as a bonus for doing that. If you do it all with one spin attack, you get that bonus. So that's pretty nice. So we are going to go up to the mountains now, because that's the next area of the game. We couldn't come here before until we got the item from the dungeon. And you will see why, because there is a bunch of ice blocking the way. They did a pretty good job of sort of forcing you to go in certain directions in the game, but things really begin to open up once we sort of get done with this area, we get a bit more of a choice in where we want to go, what we want to do. Tattle, you haven't talked in a while. Tell me about that. Up here, take a look at this. I bet if you had a weapon that was strong enough, one shot from, from it could pierce right through this. Well, it might take two shots. Oh, oh, great confidence, Tattle. I love it. You know what? I'm going to do the trick shot. Wow, I didn't even shoot up there, but it hit it. <laughs> I love the fact that shooting the base of it also breaks it. It's hilarious. So, causing that causes ice to disappear. It's cool, I guess. And these, we are now heading up into the mountains. And I actually got stuck in here for a little bit of the games because I didn't re, I didn't realize that there was a bomb shop and you could buy bombs because you, at this point in the game, you kind of need to have bombs. Otherwise, you can't get past this. What is it, Tattle? This is no good. If we just blast these snowballs out of the way, we could get through. So you need some form of explosives to get past here. And wow, that was the worst explosion ever. I put it right next to them, and it only blew up one. And it wasn't even the one it was in front of. Sheesh, bombs. You deserve to be fired. Well, I guess it's gone for good, so that's something. 
Words, why don't you work for me? And I need to stop talking about how my words don't work. So here we are, the first area of the north, the mountain village. And yes, uh, the definition of a village in a Zelda game is one house and a population of two people and a freezing Goron. That is the definition of a village in a Zelda game. Thank you very much, Nintendo. I know, I was going to do that, Owl. Show me your wings and show me your moves and we will move right on. So I actually actually really do like this place. This is actually a pretty cool area. Yeah, cool. No pun intended. <laughs> oh, I hate myself sometimes. But yes, this is probably one of the cooler areas in the game. I really do like it up here. And so it's covered up in snow right now, but uh, that's part of the curse is that uh, surprisingly the mountain area isn't supposed to be covered in snow. Who would have guessed that? Oh, beware of the dreaded white wolfos. Yes, I suppose we should be concerned about those things. <gasps> it's Tingle! Let's go bust him out of his balloon even though we don't need to. And you, Tektite, you can just stay there for the rest of your life. Hello, White Wolfos. You can just stay right there. Yeah, Deku Scrubs, they don't give a crap about any enemies. They just can stun them and leave them behind them. You know, I really am kind of beginning to appreciate Deku Link a lot more in this run. Ah, uh, sir, blah, blah, blah. You don't need any of my maps because you already bought them at extra price. Because look, Deku Link, screw fighting that guy. I'm just going to spin at him with my hat and move on my way. <laughs> so, those of you who think Deku Link is a poor character, he doesn't give a damn about anyone. He just spins and moves on his way. He doesn't need to kill them. Why bother killing him? That's just a waste of his precious time to get to his destination. He will just spin at them with his hat and move right the Foosh on. <laughs> oh boy. What am I talking about? Anyway, we're now in the Goron village, which is actually a bit more realistic in terms of being a village. Except for the fact that the there's only one place you can go into. But it's a decent size. Oh, it's the owl! It's the owl! My favorite character! I love you, owl! Owl, it's been so long! Hoot <laughs> We meet again, fairy child. Have my stone statues been of help? Well, it seems you may have the strength to change the fate of this land as I had expected. But the road ahead is even more challenging. Many trials await you, many that will probably make you screw up horribly. And this will become a land where no living thing can survive because they have not adapted to snow and ice, even though this place is commonly frozen over. But it's spring, so it shouldn't be snowy. And you are a child of many strengths that I will guide. Follow me, and you will be able to fly to the shrine. Because appearances are not daunted. So follow me. And this was probably pretty crazy the first time you do it. Because you're jumping into a gap, and you're landing on the owl feathers. So... Yeah, don't let appearances daunt you, except for the fact that these are platforms that we can't see. Okay, yeah, we should be good, except I almost died, and I almost died again, and we made it. Hoot, I have certainly been assured of your courage and determination. From here on, you must not be fooled by appearances, you must rely on your feelings. Now enter the shrine, something that will aid you in your quest lies within. Use that item when returning from here. And with the owl leaving, I think I'm going to end the episode here. So next time we'll go in the cave. So thank you guys so much for watching. And may you soar like the amazing falcons you are. And have a wonderful day. Peace out.